All right, well, I'm ready to reinstall our differential. But just before I put it on there, I'll show you a couple more things. There's an O-ring that goes on this back panel of this differential. And there's also another one that seals the differential to the swing arm. Those O-rings don't come in the bearing kit for the differential, so be sure to inspect those. And if they're damaged or torn, replace them. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is we'll take our drive shaft and I've put a little grease on the end of it there where it goes into the uh, yoke for the U-joint. Now, I'm gonna take that and start it on to the differential. I'm gonna ease it up in the swing arm. Kind of wiggle it around until it lines up with the yoke on the U-joint. And I'll start a couple of nuts on there. Now I'm gonna install the bolts that holds the rear end to the axle housing. Now that I've got everything started, I'll go ahead and tighten all this hardware down. Next, we're gonna reconnect the vent hose. All right, now we got this differential reinstalled. All we got left to do is to reinstall the axle and the brake panel and all the hardware that goes along with that. Now what I'll do is I'll refer you back to the earlier video series that I did. I'll drop a link down below and that'll show you how to reinstall all those components correctly, how to adjust everything out, and then when we get done with that, we'll come back and finish up filling up the differential with oil. All right, well, I've got everything reassembled back here. About all we got left to do now is just to finish topping up the final drive with gear oil and then we'll have everything done. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Of course, I've got my quart bottle of 90 weight gear oil here. Uh, some of you can get these little old nipples that you screw onto the end of it there and you can just squirt it in there or you can just use your funnel and pour it in, whatever. But now what I like to do is I've got a little pump that uh, fits onto my quart jug and what I like to do is take a hose and I'm going to pull this vent hose back off temporarily and I'll actually connect the hose to the vent and I'll pump the oil in through that way. And what that does is since that vent is actually in front of the pinion bearing, it's gonna make that lubrication go all the way through there so that you sure that you got plenty of lubrication in the differential itself. Uh, another reason I like to do that is if you ever go to change the oil on one of these and it's gotten water in it and the oil's a little milky, this will also help kind of flush all that re residual oil that's up in there in that pinion bearing. It'll help flush that stuff out so you can get it all out of there. Now this pump setup that I use, it's actually uh, a setup that's made for pumping gear oil into the bottom of marine lower units outboards and things. Now you can get this little pump set up at about uh, any of your local boat shops. I even think Walmart even carries the things. And they'll fit on just pretty much any quart bottle that you use. So it's real handy. Alrighty, you can see that gear oil start to come out. So that means she's full. So we'll just cap that off. Snug it up. There we go. All right. Alrighty guys, well that's going to wrap up our differential rebuild for our T-Rex 300 four-wheel drive. Now it's a lengthy little project to do, but if you take your time, you save yourself a lot of money. Yeah. Now I'll uh, leave down below in the description bar, I'll give you the part numbers to that bearing and seal kit, and I'll also give you the part number to the special tool for that pinion retainer. Alright, be sure and leave me several comments down below, and swing back by the shop again, you never know what we're going to be working on next. That's right. Alright guys, well as always, appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good one. Catch y'all next time around.